Hey guys, how you doing today? So I'm gonna just start off by painting a scenario that would kind of explain what this topic is about. Okay, good. So number one, you're a professional photographer who wants to switch from whatever brand you're currently using to Sony. Number two, you're a photographer who's trying to become a wedding photographer. And number three, you just wanna be informed. Now, here's the thing. You've often heard that cameras are expensive, and rightly so. 5000 25000 that was a joke. $5,000, $6,000. Yes, absolutely. I remember back when I used to shoot DSLRs, they were that expensive. You have to save months to buy a camera. But now things are slightly cheaper and better, if I do say so myself. So... Don't be too scared about those high prices because in this video, irrespective of whatever budget you have, as long as it is a decent budget, I'm going to walk you through three different cameras that you can invest in that will make the cut in wedding photography. So I'm going to save you time, save you hours and days of going on YouTube and asking questions and all whatnot. And hopefully at the end of this video, you will be a lot better equipped knowing, okay, this is what I need. This is how much I have, and this is what it will get me. So welcome to this video where I would talk somewhat extensively about Sony APS-C cameras that are good enough to shoot weddings. Let's get straight into it. All right, so I'll start off from like the very first beginning, give you like a good idea of, you know, what all this is about before I hit the nail on the head. So when you talk cameras, you often talk about DSLRs and mirrorless. And this is not a debate type of thing, okay? In my opinion, mirrorless rules. The major difference, apart from obviously the price and maybe the weight and the size is that DSLRs are, you know, cameras that use the optical viewfinder, but mirrorless cameras use the electronic viewfinder. Now, the difference kind of is with the optical viewfinder, the exposure that you see through the viewfinder is different from, or can be different from what you're getting. So you often have to look and readjust, look and readjust. But with the electronic viewfinder, it is what you see that you get. So it makes your process a lot faster. To me, that is the main difference between the DSLR and the mirrorless cameras. So that being said, this is no video regarding the differences. So we're starting with mirrorless, right? Good. Now, now that we're in the mirrorless sphere, we're looking at sensor sizes. This is what makes a camera expensive and not so expensive. I mean, there are other factors, but the camera sensor is the heart of the camera, like literally the heart. Now, the bigger the sensor, the better image quality. Other factors come into play, but at its base level, the bigger the sensor, the better the quality. All right, good. So there are majorly four common sensor sizes out there, right? For taking pictures from cameras and even from smartphones. The smallest size would be the one inch sensor, and these are the ones that you see on your phones, on your iPhones, on your all whatnot. The sensor in that camera is a one inch sensor. It's pretty small, but it's pretty decent as well. When you graduate from that, you get to the micro four thirds sensor. After that, you get to the crop frame sensor. This is where Sony begins to show itself because Sony has a lot of cameras within this range. After that, you then graduate to the full frame sensor, which is where the big boys play. <laughs> and then from there, you go to the medium format sensor. Now, for wedding photography, let's just keep it within the full frame sensor and the crop frame sensor. The micro four thirds is just too small. The one inch is even smaller and the medium format is way too big. You use that for like commercial walks if you're, you know, um, blowing out billboards and all that kind of stuff. So we're limiting this to the crop frame sensor and the full frame sensor. So if you're on a budget constraint, 
I would give you reasons why. You don't necessarily have to save to invest in a full frame sensor. You can get really pristine, good image quality from this coverage sensors as well. So because I'm a wedding photographer, I have six major things I look out for in a camera for me to certify that camera to say, yes, I can shoot a wedding confidently with you. And if I can find an APS-C, that would be the word I'll be using now, which is also for crop frame. If I can find an APS-C sensor that can tick all these boxes, then absolutely yes, you can as well just go ahead and buy it. So now the very first thing would be the weight, the size. Oh man, from someone who often, or when I started photography, I was using DSLRs, switching to the mirrorless sensor has been a game changer because I will often go back home with like bruises on my neck, on my shoulder, from carrying two heavy cameras and two lenses. Those DSLRs were so, so heavy. Now, the mirrorless cameras are not as heavy unless you begin to like beef them up with the grip, with the, with the zoom lens, you know, and all that good stuff. However, the APS-C sensors are even lighter than the full frame sensors. They don't weigh that much. You can just carry them with your hand. You can hang them over for hours and you're fine. At least finer than if you had a DSLR on you. So for the weight alone, especially being a photographer who documents things, you're going to be standing and walking and moving up and down. You're pretty much going to be there for like, what, 10 hours, 12 hours. You don't need something so heavy. So size and weight checked. All right, number two is just money in the bank how much are you willing to spend on something with good quality that is the thing people often which is kind of true in most cases if you want something that is of high quality it's often more expensive than other things but the sweet spot is value for money where you can get something that can do pretty much what you want at a very reasonable price that is where APS-C cameras come in they can do things even more than full frame cameras in some cases, but they're not as expensive as full frame cameras. So you're still good with the APS-C cameras. So when it comes to affordability, I mean, the three that I have in this lineup that I'm going to give you at the end of the video, they range from like $700 to like $1,200. And this is such a huge upgrade in quotes from having to save over $4,000 or $5,000 to buy a DSLR back in the days. So if you don't have that much money in the bank and you just want to get something and just start going with it, definitely APS-C. The next thing is how it is in quote to upgrade in the future if you invest in like Sony lenses. Lenses are made for particular camera system, particular mounts. So you hear about the E-mounts, you know, stuff like that, because this particular lens was made for a full frame sensor mount, or this particular lens was made to, to fit into a crop frame sensor mount, mount, meaning that the lens covers the whole part of the sensor. So if you didn't put a lens that was made for a full frame sensor into a crop frame sensor, the lens has to adjust because the sensor size has dropped. So because of that, you didn't get a 1.5 magnification. Don't bother yourself with the math or anything. But what I'm saying is irrespective, if you invest in an APS-C camera and you buy the appropriate Sony lenses for it, when you finally get more money and you feel the need to upgrade to a full frame, you can still use the same lenses. So you don't have to change everything completely. The transition is just smooth. And I think that is a plus. So we'll check that as well. The next thing is, I mean, this just goes without saying, it's as simple as saying, I am a guy, like I'm a man. It's very obvious. I don't have to prove it to you. It's the same way as saying Sony cameras autofocus is just out of this world. Like there's nothing else that comes close. So it is, we don't need to argue so much about this 
it is in the bag like signed sealed everything the autofocus on the a6600 the autofocus on the a6500 the autofocus on the a6400 they are fast there's a lot of tracking going on a lot of eye focusing going on even animal eye autofocus going on so you are good with tracking your subjects as a wedding photographer you don't want to miss anything and you don't want to get things out of focus you might be trying to shoot a bride or a groom and then the focus just misplaced you somewhere in the frame and you just get the wrong person you need to be able to track and with this APS-C cameras you can absolutely do that especially on the dance floor where there's like a lot of people going up and down in the frame so you're good when it comes to just general sony supreme autofocus another thing to consider will be the fast shooting rates they go as high as 11 11 frames per second that is a very high rate you know just going all the way and why would you need that as a photographer? Because things happen that we can't really control. Things are, which is why I love it. You know, you just can't predict what will happen next. So I am drawn to wedding photography because of the spontaneity, because things are not in my control, but just being able to seize that moment and grab it really quickly, knowing fully well that nothing can bring back that moment, makes it just an absolute joy, a job for me to have. And to accomplish that effectively, I need a camera that is as fast as whatever is happening. So at 11 frames per second, nothing is running away from you, fam. I promise you are getting it because the camera is fast. So if someone is poking their nose, you're getting it. If someone is about to sneeze, you're getting it. If the groom is giving the bride, you know, some lovey-dovey side eye, you're getting it because it is so fast. Now, pair that fastness with supreme autofocus and what more do you want amazing and finally if you are going to be a hybrid shooter eventually which a lot of us end up being anyway because i know i'm trying to do that and a hybrid shooter is you know you start off as a photographer and eventually you want to go into videos or you are a videographer and eventually you want to go into photos well you don't want to buy a camera now that helps your photography needs. And in the nearest future, when you feel like you want to do video, then you can't do anything. The thing about these APS-C cameras from Sony is they can do both. They can even record 4K. And the A66 and A6500 come with image body stabilization. That is so good. Cause back in the days, you only find that on the high end cameras, but now you can find it on a camera that is less than a thousand bucks. No, come on. That is that is amazing. That is really, really good. So these are six reasons why the APS-C mirrorless cameras have come to stay. And in this video, the three cameras I'm talking about are the A6400, the A6500, and the A6600. If you can save up and buy any of these cameras, I promise you, you are well well on your way to success of course there's more than just buying a camera yeah, yeah, i know that i know that yes but you need the right tool and you don't want to stop because you don't have the money right now so with whatever you have or whatever you can save if you can save up to 800 if you can save up to 1100 or 1300 you can get either of these cameras i just mentioned and you'll be absolutely stunned at the results that you're getting. So I really hope that this video has enlightened you, made you understand, you know, DSLRs versus mirrorless cameras, giving you an inside scope when it comes to sensor sizes and uh, what to look out for being a wedding photographer and to narrow it down to just three choices, which is a lot for you to choose when it comes to choosing an APS-C sensor camera. So thank you for watching. You can always follow us on Instagram or you can see more videos like this at alphauniversemedia.com. Our Instagram handle is Sonny NEA. And my Instagram handle is Akitaro Timi. So thank you, that's a lot of handles for you. But yes, anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.